interested in you know renewables in the state and their potentially transformative power? Well, because Nevada is so unique. I mean, we we have these geothermal resources that other states don't have, and that's something that we should capitalize on. It so there's an incredible potential there, untapped mm-hmm. potential, and then. With regard to the solar, I mean, it, it just if you look at any of those maps that talk about the concentration of the, the rays and things, Nevada is perfectly situated to um, capture that as well. So why wouldn't you, as a state, take advantage of, of a resource that other states don't possess? Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it goes beyond that. I, I had a meeting in this very room with some of the tribes. I don't know where this, but there are tribes in southern Nevada that want to take advantage and, and see this as a great opportunity. For them to provide jobs for their for their tribe members and to, to diversify themselves as well so i see it both from a resource standpoint for for the state and also an opportunity for for some some of the populations in our state to to really become independent so there's a lot of levels where i'm very excited about the, the potential here so i wouldn't say i was a convert i didn't have to be converted mm-hmm. because this is something i've always felt strongly about. I mean, when you have a company like Ormap, and you have some very significant companies that have created a cluster here in their cap in, in northern Nevada for their headquarters, that, again, that's something that we want to do in, in economic development, is make that one of our anchors. One of the the big problems in uh, California has been yeah, permitting and bureaucracy. And, you know, some of this, of course, involves the BLM land, so it's in the federal hands. But what can you do to reduce that? Uh, well, one, one opportunity is I, I mentioned in my preliminary remarks about Copper Mountain, Boulder City. Boulder City has all this privately owned land that the city owns, and they're the ones who are leasing to that, that project, that company, for that solar energy. So they were able to expedite their process and have that solar plant in, what, a couple years maximum? And so that is a great opportunity. As I mentioned, those tribes, they, they, they're sovereign nations, and then they own the property themselves, so they can have an expedited uh, permitting process as well. I've already had conversations or met with Secretary of the Interior, Salazar, in Washington, D.C., to, to tell him how big of a priority it is for the state of Nevada to see if we can expedite some of these permitting processes with the BLM. You mentioned that. But I think that um, that's a relationship that, that certainly I want to capitalize on as well. I don't know if Stacy has anything else to add. Certainly, I think from that level, from Salazar and the Sandoval's level down, we have been tasked with um, meeting and coordinating with BLM, our um, uh, Department of Wildlife, and all the other federal agencies, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, to make sure that those processes are as smooth as possible. And I think we've seen that direction and guidance um, from that level. and. And we have been actively meeting um, with those folks. It's it's amazing what happens when you get at the table together and talk about what where are the issues and where can we speed up this process and how can we um, eliminate some of these um, these hiccups. And but is the state doing some things like in California? One of the big problems is the state fish and game charges the fee per acre, and a lot of solar developers complain about that because it's one additional cost that they didn't anticipate in the beginning. Is the state willing to say, okay, well? You know, property tax, we will not collect on certain solar farms or certain fees we're going to take away from it. And we have a lot of great incentives um, where that's a concern. We have the Renewable Energy Tax Abatement Program where um, all renewable generation and transmission projects are um, eligible for tax abatements, property and sales and use tax abatements for their projects. And so we try to kind of minimize the, um, the cost to those developers to do those great projects that provide jobs and and I don't want to be critical of California, cause I don't, but, but that's... I live there, I can be. Yeah, no, but I guess what I'm trying to do is accentuate Nevada is we're engaged. And as I said, I have taken upon myself to be, make this a priority so that I, even when I was in Washington, I took it upon myself to meet with the secretary. But I, I took it, you know, I've taken upon myself to take a leadership role in terms of empowering Stacy to do the things she's needed to do to talk to my um, my cabinet and one of the things that we're talking about in Nevada is service after the sale is that we are you know once we get that permit and we're going to continue to work with the various business entities to ensure that, that we kept our promises and that we're going to continue to work with them and as I said Nevada is very nimble and you know, I you know, with my cabinet uh, I'm 
a very hands-on governor in terms of meeting with them. We have monthly cabinet meetings where we all sit at the table and talk about these very issues.